Welcome back. You're watching Out of England, Akka Out of India with me, Radhika Ayer. Like I've been reporting from India over the last few weeks, this is I've had the good fortune of traveling to this lovely side, eastern side of India. And we're just off Kolkata. Um, we do know that Indian tourism is evolving so much, especially when it comes to international experiences for NRIs. Um, I have been driving through this lovely village of Bawali and then here is this property called the Rajpari, which, which really is one which is frozen in time. You could think this is probably a government department, something which stores books, but it's not. It's a, it is a, a heritage property which offers many, many, many experiences apart from um, a good, luxurious weekend perhaps. With me is Mr. Ajay Ravla who found this property and, and decided this is it, this is my love. I walked in through the door in 2008 and I was like, I, I was like Alice in Wonderland. I was completely enraptured. I fell in love. Mm. Uh, took a couple of years to trace all the owners in by, uh, 18 of them actually. Wow. And seven years in the restoration. I got some really great advice from Intac and from uh, Ratish Nanda of the Aga Khan Foundation who helped me train my masons. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it was a journey that seemed never ending but it was a lot of fun you can't sure. do this if you don't have a passion for it absolutely and so what was it 18 owners and who were these owners what is this the mandals of bawali have land grants that went back to akbar mm -hmm. one of them was the lieutenant man singh's army and he was given four of the 24 parganas as his jagidari and they were very big landowners, but they, at some point of time, went completely broke. Mm. So when I found the place, it was in a really decrepit state with banyan trees coming out of everywhere. I think you may have seen some of the photographs. I did. And the temples outside. Uh, it just took me over. The place was so amazing. I'm a third generation Punjabi in Bengal, and I'm, I'm what I call a Bangjabi. And I thought this was my opportunity to have a Desher buddy. Mm -hmm. And that's what... I took it on for to be my Deshir Bari and then along the line I realized that if I wanted to do, do justice to the place, mm. then I had to do something commercial with it, which mm. is why you're here today and Brilliant. you're seeing... You know, Brilliant. I incredible mm. indeed. And I've seen the property through it. So it's it's very tastefully done, I must Thank say. You. Thank um, you. And there, there are these lovely um, uh, structure, antique structures from, from different parts of the world which is put here. There are the local experiences. Uh, Especially if you're looking for a very different, very Indian um, holiday, then then this is one of those which will tick the box for you. Um, but my my bigger question is, Rajasthan I know is already doing it. Mr. Ravla, is there a possibility to revive those beautiful zamindari mansions and other old mansions that India is can be proud of? Really, there are so many such beautiful ones. What can we do to do that? And what can the ASI or the government do? to help people like you who spot this? I think, uh, I'm hoping, I'm speaking for Bengal because mm. Rajasthan is streets ahead of us sure. already. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this will be the beginning. It's the first ever privately funded restoration of its kind uh, in West Bengal. And I'm hoping that uh, seeing us, there will be others who will be enthused. And as a matter of fact, we now have a vertical where we're helping people work on their restoration the ASI does a good job with whatever they do. Mm. Uh, I'm sure like every organization, they have their constraints. But the one thing that would really help is if they could share um, knowledge on, on restoration techniques with owners like myself who go to them mm. to seek their advice. So if there's an advisory wing, it would be great. Mm. It's not the money that one, an entrepreneur or someone needs to fix the place, but it's really the right thinking to do it. As because far the as passion is there. The, the things are there, there are the experts to tell you how to do it. Yeah. You just need to... If you know how to do that, that's... And, and the government, the government just has to provide you infrastructure. Mm. Without infrastructure, without good roads, and uh, without infrastructure, you can't do anything because a lot of these places are not relevant in... commercially relevant today. Mm. But architecturally, historically, heritage, culturally, Bengal has the most amazing culture. The most amazing culture. Our it is the culture capital of the country. It, uh, our, our kids are taught to, uh, you know, play the tabla, play the harmonium, the sitar, sing, dance. Uh, you should see some of the pro uh, performances here at the Rajbadi in the evenings, you know, when it's lit up and we've got 
a performance happening. It's magical, absolutely. Mm. Mm. So what I thought I would showcase mm. is Bengal's cultural strength. Mm. And that's what we do now with our guests is the cultural immersion is fabulous. Mm. Our food is fantastic. I can vouch for that. I've I've eaten here mm. and, and I've eaten proper Bengali cuisine and I I think I'll skip break breakfast because the dinner last night was <sighs> You know they say there's an ad that the government runs that says uh, the sweet spot of India when they describe Bengal. Yes. But while we are the sweet spot of India, music is also the soul of Bengal. It is. And that is what, you know, when people come to us they're fascinated by how much how much diversity there is. Sure. Brilliant! Thank you very much My for pleasure. what you have done uh, <coughs> with with this with this beautiful piece of history. And uh, for any of you who's looking for a very different experience, maybe a very real experience, then think Bengal, uh, because India, like we've been saying, is much, much, much beyond the golden triangle of Delhi, Jaipur, and Agra, which is beautiful nevertheless. But then this is a very less explored part of India and. And I'm hoping that with so many layers that India is exposing to the world, there's so many soft powers that India is speaking about, this one will be right there on top of the list.